and we will get started. The first question I got, these are just three questions, they're all the same. So I got 24, 28, yeah, all of them are 24 and 28, so I'm just going to pick one. Uh, Miss Hughes, I'll pick yours. We didn't, um... <coughs> hey, Question from Wednesday. What question? It was um seven um, and one eight. Oh, about the I don't know. It's this problem. I don't remember. Okay, let me let me put the whiteboard up and you just give it to me because I can't remember what we're doing. All right. I think it was. Is it the, would that be right? I don't know. Just it tell me what it says. Seven and what? One eight. Seven and one eight. And then there was. 14. What? 14. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Just 14. Oh, you remember about the staircase and... Um... Oh, times 14. Okay, so the 7 and 1 8 times 14 steps. Everybody with me? Uh -huh. Was that the one? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we're going to turn this to an improper fraction. 7 times 8 is 56 plus 1 is 57 over 8. Multiply by 14 over 1. And 8, let's get my red pen out. 2 will go into 8 4 times. 2 will go into 14 7 times. So 50 ti 57 times 7, I'm going to go over here. Doug, do not use a calculator. We're going to try to do it without a calculator because it's real easy. I'll show you. And then 4 times 1 is 4. Now, in your brain, mentally, what is 50 times 7? Three fifty, Hubert. That's right, class. Now, what's the difference between 50 and 57? What's the difference between seven. 50 and 57? Seven. 7 times 7 is what? 14. Oh. 49, Hubert. So add to 49. What do you get? 399 over 4. Now, of course, you need to change that into a mixed number because we're dealing with feet. So, 4 will go into 39 9 times, right? That'll leave 4 times 9 is 36. That'll leave 39. So, 99 again and 3 fourths inches. I guess it's inches. I thought it was. Yeah, because the. The, uh, these are steps. This is steps and this is inches. So yes, it'd be 99 and 3 fourths inches. What? When you said 14, he smacked his head. <laughs> okay. All right, you got that one? And check with your calculator, multiply. 57 times 7 and divide by 4, you should get 99.75. Next, let's go over these questions. There we go. This one is 5.385 slash 24. And that last one was a test question also, the steps. And this one is a test question. Now I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to just make it bigger so I don't have to rewrite it. And y'all can try it out. So here we go. That is a division symbol. Now you can see it, right? That's a division symbol. Now, should you go ahead and process it as a multiplication symbol? Yes. Go ahead and do that. You can do that if you want to. So we don't find the... Flip the reciprocal and multiply. I'm gonna do it right okay. here, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna color it green. I thought you found the um. 37. What do you mean? The bottom number first. 
You're talking about the common denominator. Yeah. That's with addition and subtraction. Oh, that's right. So I'm going to change this to a green. And what is the reciprocal of 5 18 18 over 5. So there the green means that I multiplied by the reciprocal. And that's 5 over 126. Okay? So start. Can you, let's see, can we cancel anything? Yes, we can. 18 will go into 54 three times. So what's 37 times 1 times 1? And 3 times 126 on the bottom. Now we're going to do that without a calculator. Who's got a question? Now I'm going to ask you a real complicated question here. What's 3 times a dollar and a quarter? Three seventy-five. Three times a dollar and a quarter is three seventy-five, right? Yep. Well, what's the difference between a dollar and a quarter and a dollar and twenty-six cents? You had three cents. Good. Three seventy-eight. Thirty-seven over three seventy-eight. And yes, that is a test question. So we've done another couple of test questions. I told you 5.3 is going to make up 40% of your test. 5.6 is going to make up the other 40%. The other 20% come from the previous sections. 5.1, 5.2. So let's change this. I don't know if I can change it or not. Yeah, I can change it. So you did the 37 right. 378. Huh? Did you? Whenever you did Okay, good. Let me make that go down. And we feel good about ourselves. Next. Well, you should quit. If you don't feel good about yourself, you should quit. What the heck is dog? What is that? <gasps> yes, I hate dogs. I hate them. Oh. Yes, very much. Oh. You like cats? I love cats. That makes sense. Oh gosh, they pee everywhere. Not the no, they don't. If you train them, they don't. I have cats and dogs. Sorry, to train. Dogs stink. They're not clean. They jump all over things. They tear up the house. Uh, I can't stand cats them. Cats jump on everything. No, they don't. Okay. Cats you my cats lay on the floor. My cats they use the restroom whenever they need to use the restroom and they use it where they need to use it. Look, every time you walk in the house, if you own a cat, they just they lay there and look at you like oh so, Oh, that's such a that's such a crime. Better than when, a when stupid ass dog jumping my, on you. They'd be scared. Oh my goodness, when I come home and I see my German right. shepherd. So happy to see you. No, I'm sorry. To each their own, and I hope y'all enjoy your dogs. That's great. I'm glad they've got somebody to take care of them, and I'm glad you love them, but I ain't got no use for them. It's kind of and I don't have any no, friends. Look, see, my mom. Oh, you don't have any friends? <laughs> I don't have any okay, friends. here we go. Number 28. This is 5-3-101-28. And since Miss Woodward is not here, I'm going to pick on her. We'll pick use hers since they're all the same. Okay, there's Miss Woodward's question. No, this is not a test question because it's too complicated. Oh God, I hate this that question, question. This question, I do not like this question because they should they should they should rewrite it and put a drawing with the question instead of having you click on it. So here we go. Okay, so so I want you to kind of draw a picture of this. I can't make it any bigger. So, and then here's the information that you need. Oh. 
That's that such a pain in the butt. Yeah, let's just do this. Let me, hold on a second. Just hold on. You did not get all that. We are, see, I, I, I haven't been trained, but I'm going to snip. I'm going to snip this, and we care less. There we go. And we're going to bring that over. It's not going to let me. Because it's transparency. No, it's not going to let me insert it. So you're going to have to walk. You're going to have to walk. You're going to have to write it down. Travel times between Blaine, Washington to Seattle. Blaine, Washington to Seattle is one hour. 31 minutes. Seattle to Portland is 2 hours 36 minutes. Portland to Sacramento is 8 hours 4 minutes. Sacramento to Los Angeles is 5 hours 6 minutes. Los Angeles to San Diego 2 hours and 18 <clears throat> minutes. San Diego to San Cedro is 38 minutes. So write those down for me. And it says, bless you. It says, write each time travel between cities as a fraction, as a mixed number. Okay. So I'm trying to put this where I can write. There we go. So I'm going to take my handy dandy pen. So how far is it from Blaine, Washington to Seattle? Blaine, Washington to Seattle is 1 and 31 over 60. Wow. So 1 and 31 over 60. That's all you got to do. I know. Portland, Seattle to Portland. Seattle to Portland is 2 and 36 over 60, but you got to reduce it. 2 and 36 over 60 is going to be 18 over 30, which is 9 over 10, I think. Y'all check me. Thank you, Howard Cosell. 9 over 10. Next. That ain't right. Okay, Portland to Sacramento. Eight hours, four minutes. So that's going to be eight and four over 60, which is two over 30, which is one over 15. So that's going to be eight and one over 15. What the? Oh. Wow. <laughs> what? Wowzer. Now, they, they better, knowing my luck, since I'm doing all the simplifying, they're going to want them all over 60. But I'll take either. All right, Sacramento to Los Angeles. Sacramento to Los Angeles, 5 and 6. That's going to be 1 over 10. So 5 and 1 over 10. Los Angeles to San Diego. Los Angeles to San Diego, 2 and 18 over 60. So 2 and 18 over 60. 18 is going to be 9 over 30, which is 3 over 10. Y'all check me on that one. And then the last one is 38 minutes, which is 38 over 60, which is 19 over 30. Sorry I'm born, y'all. Done. And check. And I missed one. So I'm just going to... They won't tell you which one you missed? Yeah, as soon as I get there, if you'll hold on a minute. Did they want them all over 60? Yep. Oh, uh, well, yeah. What did I do wrong? I think they would Okay, they wanted them all over 60, so I'm sorry. I told you that's what they were going to want. That was what I hated. 
Okay, that you see why I don't put this one on the test? Yes. Because this is trivial. It's trivial on the way it's written, and it's trivial on the way they want the answer. So. Well, that's why I got I got so aggravated when I did that one because that was the only problem I missed on the homework, and I was like, oh come on. But just just go back and put everything over sixty. I made the same mistake. So it's trivial. That that will not be on the test. Okay. Next, let's go over scientific notation. So let me get rid of these. Now, scientific notation. If I was if I were worse, if I were to ask you the definition of scientific notation, most of you would try, but you'd probably get it wrong. Okay? So, I could ask you, but I'm not going to. The definition of scientific notation is the most important definition in this section because if you don't know the definition of scientific notation, you're not going to be able to do scientific notation. So scientific notation, 5.6. Scientific notation. Scientific notation is fine. Writing big slash small numbers with with the decimal being to the right of the first number greater than zero. Now let me go ahead and say this, because some people have their own way of doing this. And 90% of you will not have a problem with the questions I first throw up on the board. The problem will come when I give you a word problem and you have to put the answer after you multiply or divide in scientific notation. That's where the problem comes from. Does everybody understand what I just said? Yeah. The first couple of problems I put on the board, everybody's going to have their own way of doing them, and they're going to say, oh, I know how to do that. He's just doing it a different way. Okay? The problem is going to come when I give you a multiplication or a division problem, and you have to write the answer in terms of scientific notation. So let's go ahead and get started. If I have a big A number, like 4,300,000, okay, now I'm teaching to those students that have always sucked at scientific notation. I am not talking to students that invented it. Does everybody understand that? Okay, so right now, the decimal on a whole number is where? Right here. Okay? So that is not beside the first number greater than zero. Because which way do we read in America? Left to right. Left to right. So the first number greater than zero is what? And that Three. means that we need to put that decimal right there. So this is the way I explain it, and this is the way I do it. This also helps when we're doing word problems, and those people that get it wrong, you might want to follow this. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I rewrite this as 4.3 times 10 to the blank, six. Now, 90% of you will get the six right. Some of you will get it wrong because of the what? The sign. Now, this is where I get people that go, oh, well, my teacher told me that if it's a big number, it's always going to be positive, and if it's a little number, it's always going to be negative. Yep, 
And then when you get to the word problems, you're going to be one of the first people to get it wrong. Okay? So don't raise your hand. Don't say that your teacher taught you to just be quiet. And when I get there, hopefully everybody will be okay. So now I go here, and this is a Hubertism. I go to this one right here. After I do it, I say mentally. What does mentally mean? In your head. In your head. I don't do anything. I ask myself mentally, which way do I move that decimal? Do I move the decimal in my head to get the original? Okay, so this decimal right here, which way in my head do I move this decimal to get it back to the way it was, to the right? And in this case, that's going to be a positive. So, so my answer to this question is 4.3 times 10 to the 6th power. Now again, 95% of you should not have a problem with this, but if you have been taught, oh, if it's always a big number, you move positive, if it's always a little number, it's going to be negative, then you might have some problems with the word problems. So just try to have an open mind. And I'm going to give you a very small number now. Very small number is 0 0.000314. Now that is a very, very small number. And of course, y'all see the decimal. The decimal is already there because it's a decimal number. Here is the decimal. Which way do we read? So that means the first number greater than zero is where? Three. So we got to put the decimal right there. So I go and I do my counting. One, two, three, four, five. And I say 3.14 times 10 to the blank, five. And then I ask myself right here, which way do I move this decimal right here to get it back the way it was? Left. To the left. And that is your answer there. Now again, what happens is I have all kinds of students. They say, oh yeah, I know how to do that. I know how to do that. And then I throw the word problem up or a problem like the next one we're fixing to do and about half the students get it right and half the students get it wrong. Uh, let's go ahead and show you. And these are maybe one or two questions on the test. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple of freebies. Here's a couple of freebies. You know, real easy. Most of y'all will get these right. Now let's go to the ones that y'all won't get right. I'm thinking. Uh, 3 times 10 to the 4th power times 15 times 10 to the 3rd power. Okay, now this is a multiplication problem with scientific notation. No, you are not need. You do not need to use a uh, calculator. calculator because you can do everything by hand. You do not need to write it out. I had one girl one time. She wrote out okay three. That's four. That's one, two, three, four. That's three thousand or three thirty thousand times fifteen thousand. And she was writing all these zeros down and then multiplying and writing zeros down. And it took like two or three lines of work. And 15 minutes later, she had some kind of answer. I don't know if it was right or not. But that's not the way you do it. The way you do it is you multiply 3 times 15, and then you multiply 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 3rd, which you use your exponential laws. 
So, what is 3 times 15? 45. Uh, yeah. Times 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 3rd. And what do we do when the bases are the same and you're multiplying terms? What do you do with the exponents? 45 times 10 to the 4 plus 3, which is 45 times 10 to the what? 7th power. Up. Are we done? No, we are not done. Why? It's not in scientific notation. So I want everybody to change that last number, 45 times 10 to the fifth. I want you to change it to scientific notation, please. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to rewrite it as 45 times 10 to the seventh power. And then I'm going to take my, where is my decimal? Right there. And I'm going to move it one place. And then I'm going to say 4.5 times 10 to the seventh blank one. Which way did I move this decimal right here in my head to get it back the way it was? To the right. To the right. Okay, so the people that had to the sixth power, go ahead and erase it because you're wrong. It's to the eighth power. And I guarantee you, you do not have to raise your hand. I guarantee you somebody got to the sixth power. Okay? You cannot, you've got to find one way to do it. And I have found this is the best way to teach it because it's consistent. Which way do I move this decimal in my head right here? Which way do I move that decimal in my head to get it back the way it was? And that's why this is positive, not negative. I actually heard somebody say negative, which is normal because of the way that you're taught. You're taught... Oh, it's a small number, it goes to the left. If it's a big number, it goes to the right. And that's why people get this type of problem wrong. That's your answer. I was looking at the first one, and that's why I said left. Yep. Well, I didn't know it was you until you told on yourself. Okay. That's all right. Let's do a nerd. Let's do this one. 22 times 10 to the fifth divided by 2 times 10 to the negative 4th. All right, I'm going to let y'all work on it. And if you can't do it, you know, just mark it up as what? A disappointment to me and to a lot of people. <laughs> Easily, y'all sure have got a lot of bookcases up there. Are y'all in the library? Are y'all in the Easily library? Nope. Huh? I, I know. I said a lot of bookcases. Oh, you said, is it, are you in the library? Yeah. yeah. In the library. Well, I'll never it's, it's a joke. <laughs> drink your drink and work on your math problem. <laughs> the book 
book that Y'all see what I have to work with here easily. It's traumatizing. Yeah, it is. I'm really logical. Will y'all look in y'all's library up there and see if y'all got a book on difficult students? I'm sure there's one somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure. You didn't even know we had a library. I did. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's right behind you. See it? <laughs> you know, it's one of your favorite team's bulldogs, but you hate dogs. Yeah. It's yeah. so, like, <laughs> ironic. You hate cats? No, I have cats. Okay, what, well, name something you hate. Okay. When I go to so you want to be so you want to be oh stupid the rest of your life? I mean, no, I just don't want to be broke. Okay, you just don't. <laughs> you just want you just want your cake, but not have to bake it, right? Okay, that's the millennial attitude. Okay, well, baking stuff is fun. What? Baking stuff is fun. No, a lot of people don't want to have to work. That's the problem. I work my time. I know it's disappointing. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about in today's society. Okay, so what's 22 divided by 2? 11, Hubert. Times 10 to the 5 minus a negative 4. What do you do when you have the same term, same base, and you're dividing exponents? What do you do? You subtract them. So that's going to give us 11 times 10 to the 9th. Are we done? No. Nope. So 11 times 10 to the ninth. Here's the decimal. You want to move it there. 1.1 times 10 to the 9 blank 1. Which way did I move this decimal in my head to get it back the way it was? To the right. 1.1 times 10 to the 10th power. And that's how you do scientific notation. Okay. I'm going to do a couple of word problems, so make sure you watch this video, okay? Have a good weekend. Question on those two, those two that we just did. Now I'm going to do one that mixes all three of them, all two of them together. I'm going to discourage y'all before it's over with. So here we go. How about 8 times 10 to the 4th times 4, or not 4. Yeah, we can go with 4. 4 times 10 to the 3rd, or we'll go with a minus 3, over, let's see, let's go with 2 times 6 to the, I'm sorry, 2 times two times 10 to the negative 8. 2 times 10 to the negative 8. All right? I want you all to, now, of course, do the multiplication first. Do the top first, and then you can divide.
Okay, so what is 8 times 4? 30 what? 32. 32 times 10. What is 4 plus a negative 3 or 4 minus 3? To the first power. Divided by 2 times 10 to the negative 8. Now what is 32 divided by 2? Times 10 to the 1 minus a negative 8. 16 times 10. What is 1 minus a negative 8? 9. I'm sorry. Y'all don't listen to me. What happens to the two <laughs> negatives? Comes a plus. Y'all just don't listen to me. All right. There's the decimal right there. we got to move it right here. That's 1.6 times 10 to the 9 blank 1. And which way do we move this one in our head to get it back the way it was? To the right. So your answer is 1.6 times 10 to the 10th power. Now, like I said, they're not difficult, but if you try to do these problems with the old adage, well, if it's a big number, you move it to the left, big or right, and if it's a small number, you move it to the left, you're not going to have a clue what to do when you get to the end of these problems. Okay? So, with that being said, let's look at a couple of the homework problems. Because I'd like to show those. Now, y'all are going to be able to do the first part real easy. What do you mean? Well, I'll show you. They're just convert, you know, convert this to scientific notation, convert this to regular notation, and it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so let me show you what those look like. Uh, where is, are we, yeah, where is assignment? There we go. So there. There it is. Oh. And this is 5.6. So these first ones are going to be like real easy for you. See, like, what is 4, what is what is 3 plus 2? 4 to the what? 4 to the 5th. So you do 4, shift up to the 5th power. And that's... Okay, oh, they want you to... I guess they want you to multiply. They want you to do... Uh, they want you to do 4 to the 4 to... 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4. I'm not doing all that. Put that in a calculator. So I'm not going to worry about that. Put it in a calculator, 4 to the 5th power. It's going to be a BA number. Now, what about this one? This one is negative 4 to the what? 5th power. That one's going to be negative. Why? Because when you, when you have a odd exponent to the 5th power, your answer is going to come out whatever the sign of the original number is. So, this one, what is 4 here? Is it positive or negative? It's positive. So your answer is going to come out positive because your 3 and 2 is 5. That's an odd exponent. What is, your, what is this one? This one's negative. So it's going to come out negative because a negative raised to an odd exponent is negative. So I'll just hit check answer. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And this one is going to be negative 1,024. Make sure you know that. Okay, That's not a test question, but that is a standardized test question. Both of them. Okay, next one. What is 8 minus 2? 6. So that would be 2 to the 6th power. Shift up. Somebody do 2, I know 2 to the Fifth is 32, it'd be 64, wouldn't it? And I'll just type in 64. I think it's 64. So what would negative 2 to the 6th power be? 
be 64 because anytime you raise a negative to an even exponent, what does it make it? What's negative 4 times negative 4? Positive 16. What's negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4? It's going to be positive. Remember, if you raise a negative to an even, it's going to be positive. If you raise a negative to an odd, it's going to be negative. And that's what they're trying to teach you there. Anything to the zero power is 1. 1. 1. Oh, I'm sorry, that's to the negative. It's got a negative in front of it. Sorry. Negative 1. These are so basic, you forget them sometimes. Okay? Those are not, these are not test questions, but standardized test questions. Okay. Now, I want to show you this because it's easier to show you than it is to do it. What do you not want? You don't want a negative exponent. So, this is what you do with a negative exponent. 3 to the negative 1, or 4, over 1, and 9 to the negative 2 over 1. You write them as a fraction, and what do you do if you want to get a positive exponent? Does anybody remember that from algebra? You flip it. And this becomes 1 over 3 to the 4th, and this becomes 1 over what? 9 to the 2nd. 3 to the 4th is 81, I believe. And 9 to the 2nd is 81. So your answer is both 81, 1 over 81. Well, you retained it. That means you learned it. The things that you don't learn, you don't retain. You just regurgitate and then you forget it. That's the difference between learning and regurgitation memorization. 1 divided by 81. And the next one is 1 divided by 84. One of my questions, no. Standardized test question, yes. These are the questions that you might see on a test. I'm not going to ask you a bunch of these. But this is the questions that you should get right. Okay, so 7.97. times, you hit shift 8 for the asterisk. What? 10 to the what? Ten. Well, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I need to move this decimal to the right. So that's going to be to the positive. Well, you don't have to write positive, just fifth. I feel like I'm doing y'all's homework for y'all. 3.1 times shift 8, 10, and we know it's going to be negative, oops, shift up, negative, how many? 4. Okay, now they want you to write it in regular notation. So how, what does positive 5 mean? 1, 2, 3, Four, five. That means four zeros, doesn't it? So four, six, one, two, three, four. Remember, if you're moving it and the zeros is is one less zero. So next. And that's gonna be one, two. So that means not two zeros, but one zero. Zero, four, seven, three. Any questions? Like I say, there we go. Now we're getting into the ones that cause problems. So let's do this one. I'm going to do a couple of these, and then we'll try to do a word problem. Well, what time's class over? Okay. I hate that. I hate Monday, Wednesday, Friday. He ain't got five minutes to teach. <laughs> Well, you don't. By the time you get everything started, you only got like 30 minutes to teach. And I'm not going to start the class at exactly 501 or whatever. I'm not going to do that. So. Well, my English teacher starts at 4A, so. 
Yeah. She's not supposed to do that. And she does, so she counts as like. 2.9 times 2 times 10 to the second times 10 to the negative 7. And what's 29 times 2? 58, 5.8 times 10. What is 2 minus 7? Negative 5, and that's your answer. Now, the reason we don't have to change anything Nope, it doesn't say believe in scientific notation. What does it say? Write as a decimal. One, two, three, four, five. So that means four zeros. So that's your answer. Now, is the math hard here or do you have to follow the directions? You're going to have to follow the directions, and that's going to be point zero 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 five eight. All right, so let's cut her off, cut off the recording, and I thank everybody. No, there's two.